Jimmy Butler is becoming an NBA legend, but he's got secrets he doesn't tell anybody. A sus relationship with Michael Jordan? A magazine controversy? He was literally homeless and he almost died. These are 20 things you didn't know about Jimmy Butler. And first, Jimmy's the best singer in the NBA? So do you sing? Do I sing? Yeah. Do birds fly? Okay now. Music is a part of Jimmy's DNA. Whether he's singing for fun, before NBA games, Jimmy, this your jam! Right or during commercials, I won't dance. Oh, yes, I will. Sing. He's fallen in love with singing so much, he doesn't care who he annoys. But Jimmy's favorite type of music is country. It inspired him to change his entire look, and it got Jimmy in the booth working on his own album. Low key, I might have to start bumping Jimmy on the ox. Anyways, that's just what comes out of Jimmy's mouth, though. At number 19, what he puts in it is one of the weirdest diets I've ever seen. I haven't been to a grocery store in a long time. Jimmy doesn't eat like other NBA players. We're talking about a dude who apparently can't even eat a single meal that doesn't have avocados. It only gets crazier, though. I mean, dude has an entire series on his YouTube channel where he cooks cheat meals. Sometimes, Jimmy even casually eats some of the hottest wings in the world. It goes nothing. Here it goes. I did it. But the craziest part about Jimmy's diet is that before every meal, he has to eat dessert first? I don't know how the man stays in good enough shape to be a pro basketball player. Maybe that's why at number 18, he's training to become a professional race car driver. I need to get in my zone. I got a race coming up. Come on, let's pray. I'm for real. Heavenly yeah, Father, please. Please don't let them do nothing crazy while I'm in the car. You know I'm scared. Look over. Amen. Yo, please don't go that fast. Yeah? No, you don't gotta go that fast. Don't let you die. Jimmy ain't actually a speed racer. Dude only drives soccer mom vans. What, what car have you got? What car have I got? What car have you got? A minivan. A Toyota Sienna. Sit back and relax. We're on the road. My, not our, my Toyota Sienna. How you doing? Toyota Sienna. But no matter what Jimmy pulls up in, compares to number 17, Jimmy actually predicted the future? It all started with Game 7 of the 2022 Eastern Conference Finals, where with time winding down and Jimmy having a chance to save his team from elimination, his shot lost them the series. For the lead! Loose and Horford! So afterwards, all Jimmy could say was, We had enough um, next year. We will have enough. And we're going to be right back in the same situation. And uh, we're going to get it done. And now, Fast forward to exactly a year later, it was the exact same day the Heat were matched up with the exact same opponents for yet another Game 7. This time though, rumors spread that Miami already booked their flight to Denver for the NBA Finals, all because of Jimmy's prediction. And well, later that night... The Heat are going to the NBA Finals. What a win on the road, third win in this series for the Heat in Miami. Damn, Jimmy really told the future. But if only he could have seen number 16, the time he was almost killed. Jimmy's always been scared of the water. I know what I'm good at, and being in water, I'm not good at. I mean, he admitted he's a grown man who can't even swim. I can't swim, so I, I, I can't no swim reason. either. You can't swim? Uh-uh. Oh, you got hood tendencies, man. Yeah. You would run with us. Give me some. <laughs> so after ESPN heard Jimmy's confession, they tried helping him conquer his fear with a trip to the woods. What are we getting into? Ah, a little outdoorsy stuff. My swag is crazy right now. Oh, get a life preserver on oh, this yeah. guy. Oh, yeah, no, I need both of these. <laughs> I can't swim. Right, left, right. Are there sharks out here? 
Uh, I don't think so. Okay, ah! now just sit down. <laughs> Yo, this is not happening right now. We did it! We gotta start paddling, paddle! Well, are you helping? Yeah, I'm helping. Go left, go left. This water is cold. I don't think that that makes sense. I think I should go this way. No, if you do that, we'll go straight. Just to keep going. We're turning. Can't you see we're turning? Look, I'm making sure that we're being stagnant. See? Well, I told you. We're going backwards, dude. Yeah, but you're going that way, so it's making us turn. That was a lot harder than I thought it would be because somebody didn't pull their way. <laughs> yes, I did. Whatever, bro. Ah! What? what? <laughs> Get up. Get up. Hot! I'm mad! You set me up! Alright, Jimmy didn't actually almost lose his life, but at number 15, what if I told you that he changed his biggest fan's life? And so we're back with a great story of the Miami Heat making a lifetime memory for a fan who traveled a long way to see his favorite player. Oh, it started out as a night of disappointment for 12-year-old Felipe, it turned into a memory that will certainly last a lifetime. Here's what happened right before tip-off of the game last night. Jimmy Butler was scratched with a back issue. Much to the dismay, you see the young kid there traveled more than 4,400 miles to see Jimmy play. Traveled from Argentina, but at the half, the Heat ended up giving him a jersey and a ball. The Heat making it right for Felipe. There's Gabe Vincent giving him the gifts at halftime, the ball, the jersey. What a great story, right? But signed jerseys and pictures with the team couldn't fully make up for the fan not seeing his favorite player actually hooping. So Jimmy surprised his entire family with the time of their lives. I was devastated because I, I never want to miss games, and I, I know that everybody wants to watch their favorite players play. And believe it or not, I am some people's favorite player. <laughs> but I got to change their flight plans. I got to hang out with them. And then they got to sit courtside and, and watch me do my thing. Oh my God. <laughs> Jimmy comes right, working against Park. Touchdown! Toss a foul! We have fans all over the world, and I want all those fans to be able to watch myself play and everybody else play. So, any opportunity we get to do that, I want to make that happen. Wow. For Jimmy to care that much about just one of his fans says a lot about who he is off the basketball court. And so does number 14. Because Jimmy's secretly leaving the NBA? On this team right now, which players realistically could be in the NFL and why? Me. Like, I'm very serious. And I think if you were to ask people that aren't haters, which everybody on this team is, um, it'd be me because I'm fast and I, I, I have great hands. I can really catch. He's an idiot. Jimmy's an idiot. You can't even score on me, bro. I think he's absurd. No way. Jimmy has no shot. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Jimmy is not good as good a receiver as the worst receiver in the NFL. Nobody except Jimmy believed he could actually be a football player. So he began obsessing over proving people wrong. Like, he challenged an NBA player on the field and burned him. Then, Jimmy began comparing his basketball ability to a football player. Jimmy, watching you on, on Kyle's passes, it, it almost looks like you were tight end out there. Don't there do that. E there was I'm even one play. Wide receiver. Okay, wide receiver. And after that, he even started challenging NFL superstars to $30,000 battles. With that being said, I could be in debt 30000 to him right now because I tried to guard him in a red zone and failed. One of the best wide receivers in the league. You bet him $30,000. Hypothetically speaking, it started at 10. He could or could not have went three for three. Three times 10 is 30. I'm just saying it could have happened. You thought you would best AB once. Hypothetically speaking, yes. But once Jimmy got cooked by real football players, I mean, he posted saying that he could see his football dreams slipping away. And now I see why at number 13, Jimmy bullies celebrities and steals their money. Shoot my six jump shots, bust his ass and go to bed. What if I outshoot you left-handed? Oh. Hey, Let's go 10 with my left and you shoot 10 with your right. I'm not a left. Oh. Oh. Hey, what's the You go first. Big adjustment. Money in the bank. Money in the bank. That's how you do it. And where's this night? Oh, that's all. Three feet. Money in the 
no. Oh shit, let me move. Glance through your eye. Come on, JB. Come on, JB. Somebody call him an Uber. Call him an Uber. Call him an Uber. Now, all right, I'm not gonna lie. Kevin kept it close, but not even a short king like himself was gonna take on the Jimmy Butler. Besides, Jimmy needs all the money he can get, cuz at number 12, when he whipped out the funniest celebration in NBA history, he got fined. Hand off to Struess, lets it fly. Kaboom. Max Struess to the rescue. It's Bo's fault. He always says to celebrate everybody else's success. Max going to 10-0 run, I celebrate, I get fine. I mean, it's Jimmy, man. Dude's always excited when balls are around. Like, at number 11, he literally admitted he blew up. Damn, that don't even sound right. I just blew up a <laughs> Uh, yeah. When Jimmy took a business trip to Italy, it wasn't only to enjoy the scenery. A tour guide took him to a special place where they created all sorts of glass decorations. Oh, it's a pony. I'm a pony. I'm a pony. Oh, you in the game. But Jimmy wasn't just trying to stand around and watch. He wanted in on the action, so he refused to leave without showing him what his mouth game could do. I got one blow uh, as fast as I can. I look like a huh? Damn, that didn't sound right. I just blew up. Oh, oh, wow. That was so unnecessary. You did not have to swing it like that. Damn, Jimmy might be a throat goat. But speaking of goats, at number 10, what if I told you that Michael Jordan is secretly Jimmy Butler's dad? Rumors about Michael Jordan having a secret unnamed son have been spreading like crazy and reports said that Jordan had a kid around the time Jimmy was born. Back in 1988, according to Jordan's game law, he was playing the Mavericks on December 3rd in Texas. Ironically though, Jimmy was born in the exact same area of Texas on September 14th, 1989, around nine months after Jordan's trip. And to make the situation even weirder, Jimmy's mom apparently received 23 roses when he was born. Maybe it's a coincidence, but all this time, Jordan's apparently kept whoever his son was a secret to protect his public image, and he secretly paid a woman child support for 13 years until all of a sudden, the payments stopped. The craziest part about all this though is the legendary story of Jimmy is that when he turned 13 years old, his unknown dad disappeared from the family and Jimmy's mom actually kicked him out and sent him into homelessness after she said, I don't like the look of you, you gotta go. My mom kicked me out of my house to tell the truth. I bounced in and out of guys' houses in high school. Like I said, my senior year, I found a stable home that just kept me. Without him, I definitely wouldn't be in this position. But, like, why wouldn't she like the look of this innocent kid? Well, taking a look at the viral picture of Jimmy and Jordan side by side, I mean, they look pretty damn identical if you ask me. Not to mention, we've seen Jimmy doing Jordan's iconic layups, hitting turnaround fadeaways on Kobe, just like Jordan did. And the two were even seen recently hanging out at a shooting competition. Man, like father, like son. And now I see how Jimmy was miraculously drafted by the Bulls. Cause at number nine, he instantly broke one of Jordan's most legendary records. During one of Jimmy's matchups with the Raptors, he was on the wrong side of history after dropping only two points in the first half. But when the next quarter started, Jimmy turned into Mike. Butler, and he gets it. Jimmy Butler, another driving layup. The jump is good. Turns baseline, fires, scores. Jimmy right now is asking for Butler inside, pump fake, score, and a foul. Butler hangs, fires, scores. points in the second half 40 which not only carried his team to the win and broke jordan's bulls record for most points scored in a single half it even had jordan's best teammate talking about it on twitter but who the f 
cares what Scottie Pippen says though? Dude looks like a homeless man and is a troll. But no NBA player is a bigger troll than Jimmy at number 8. We're talking about a dude who mocks up his teammates dribble. Or when his opponents like Al Horford troll Jimmy with a celebration, he'll do it right back at him, beat him, then post it on Instagram. Speaking of Insta though, Jimmy's even the type of dude to flirt with NBA Legends girls on their own picks. Until Dwayne Wade threatened to whoop his ass, so he stopped doing that. But Jimmy ain't afraid of anybody, especially when it comes to beef in person. Cause at number 7, he created one of the most disrespectful moments in NBA history. What seemed like just a random game between the Heat and the Pacers quickly turned into a blow up. So eventually things got heated between Jimmy and one of the Pacers stars TJ Warren. Here comes Butler, Warren spinning him around and Butler not happy with that, had to be restrained. Well, Butler definitely agitated. Oh, don't, don't read lips. Heat Nation, do not read lips. Double technical fouls. One for TJ Warren, the other for Jimmy Butler. And Warren right back on Butler. Oh, Jimmy. Put a shoulder into the chest of Warren, and then Warren just got himself tossed out of the game for Taunton. Well, neither player showing much in the way of poise right there. Oh, my. T.J. Warren, that is a no-no. That's why Warren's going to be tossed right now. See, he turned, he's walking away, and he's still being taunted. See, they're administering. He blew him a kiss. What sort of made it so chippy all of a sudden out of just, like, the one foul? I mean, to me, I think it's tough for him because I can guard him, he can't guard me. He got to see me the next time because I, I feel like what he said was, was truly disrespectful. I ain't scared of nobody. You know, he talking about, oh, we're going to fight, this, that, this, that. He's soft. He's not, he's not even in my fucking league, like, nowhere near near me and if, if I was their coach I would never put him on me put somebody else on me so he's trying damn Jimmy went in but he also went Instagram he posted a calendar and circled his next matchup with dude just to say don't be mad you can't guard me we'll see what you about in March and what did TJ have to say about that absolutely nothing cuz he knows Jimmy ain't one to play with, especially after number six, where Jimmy's been training to become a Roman gladiator? A couple of things I have to tell you before uh, before having you in the arena to see you spitting blood and uh, dust. I like it. Nice. You like it? Yeah, you gonna wow. spit the blood. Let's do it. Oh, what's up, baby? Oh, okay, now. Yeah, that's the moment. Oh, he didn't do that. He Shut didn't up! I'm here. talking to you. Shut up, Snape. What? <laughs> Yo, this is Calipoo. You talk to me like that one more time. Like you wanna time. leave or die? <laughs> 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 yes. You want kids cookies, guys? Cookies? I thought you'd never Stop asked. talking! Show yourself! Why? Ah! You! Ah! You never do! Ah! 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 Hey, you cold with it, boy. I know you had that. That was cold. Yeah. That was cold, huh? What do you want to let me tell you? You are good? Yeah. I'm great. No, yeah. you are not good. Oh, you man. You are not good. That ain't okay? it. I don't want to see you dancing. <laughs> we are not making a, how do you say, <laughs> free dance. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Got him. I read that one. All right, that's enough for one day. Did you have a good time? Yes, sir. Sure? Yep. This is your Roman citizenship. Where are you going? Ah, we did it! We did it! We did it! Damn. Now, Jimmy's a certified killer. But at number five, he's also an armed robber? I sit in his chair pregame. He comes back in the locker room and tells me to get the fuck, fuck up on my seat, guys. It's a playoff. Stop fucking around. That's our pregame routine. Who the hell does Jimmy think he is with that gun out? Ja Moran? It's a parade inside my city, yeah. Uh, shut your dumb ass up, Ja. You better get kicked out of the league and lose a million dollars again. Just like number four when Jimmy lost his own fans over a million. Your job is to put this ball in that hoop without stepping over this line. And if you make it, our studio audience will split one million dollars. <laughs> If you don't, they will follow you back to your hotel and destroy everything in it, okay? I'm not in a hotel, so... Oh, okay, very good. Here he is, Jimmy Butler. The ball's up! Oh! 
Should we give him one more shot? Yeah. I had a feeling they would say that. Jimmy, this is your last shot. Be better this time. I don't know what to say other than that. The people, traffic is getting angry. <laughs> oh, that's Here it goes. Oh. Here it goes. Oh That's goodness. unfortunate. I'm sorry, but you know what? I don't want our audience to go home empty-handed, so how about this? If you make a layup, if you run across the street and make a layup, we'll give everyone a pair of gold toe socks. That's the show for tonight. I'd like to thank Jimmy Butler. Damn, hold up. Jimmy can't make shots for a mill, but he can make up for socks? He even hit shots that make grown men wet? Oh. Dang. Oh. Dang. Dang. Jimmy in the water? Uh, I already know he hated that. And to be honest, at number three, what if I told you he actually hates the team he plays for? Jimmy never wanted to join the Miami Heat. I mean, just take a look at his magazine interview. He literally said the one thing he'd never wear was a Miami Heat jersey. Uh, now that's awkward. There was a magazine clipping of you, and it was an interview about your fashion. And then the one question was, what's the one thing you never want to wear? Do you remember your answer to it? Yeah. What was your answer? Uh, it was a Miami Heat jersey. When I'm coming to the league, I mean, the Heat used to beat the Bulls all the time. We, we can't like the Miami Heat. You can't like D-Wade, even though y'all went to the same school. Like, you know, and then you fast forward and I'm playing with D-Wade for the Bulls. I'm like, this guy's not a bad guy. That was Tibbs. It just kept hitting me upside my head. And full circle now, um, It'll, it'll be the last jersey that I wear. Speaking of jerseys though, haven't you ever wondered why Jimmy wears a different jersey number for every single team he plays for? Well, at number two, there's secrets behind why he chose them. In high school, Jimmy repped the number one because of his idol, NBA legend Tracy McGrady. And that number ironically helped Jimmy become such a basketball legend, the school retired his number. Once Jimmy got to college at Marquette though, he wanted to rep his family's favorite NBA legend, Larry Bird. So Jimmy rocked the number 33, and while wearing that, made college basketball history. Coming into the NBA though, a lot has changed for Jimmy's jersey numbers. Cause while playing for the Bulls, he wanted to rep his dad's 23, but obviously they retired Jordan's number, so Jimmy had to settle for 21. But deep down, he always wanted MJ's number. And that's why when he eventually went to Minnesota, then got dealt to Philly, he repped the number 23 there. When he got to Miami though, there was a huge problem with choosing that number. It's all because the Heat retired Jordan's number even though he never even played there. And it was just because the Heat's owner Pat Riley believed nobody in the NBA should be allowed to wear the number after what Jordan accomplished. Uh, we want to honor you tonight by hanging your jersey forever. Number 23 from the Raptors of the American Airlines Arena and that no player ever again will ever wear number 23 for the Miami Heat here. So yeah, you can see why not even LeBron could get the number when he came to Miami, but Pat was willing to break the rules just for Jimmy to come join the Heat family. You can't wear 23 here yeah. because of MJ. Yeah. Literally, Pat Riley retired it. Yeah. But I will say this, <laughs> whenever I did come here, Pat told me that I could wear 23. But... <laughs> <laughs> so 22 it is. And now when you think about it, I don't know if you see what I see, but if only Jimmy's allowed that number, it's like maybe he really is Michael Jordan Jr. But that's not as big of a secret as number one. Cause all year long, Jimmy's had a hidden motivation to humiliate the Boston Celtics. Now it's not cause their legendary legacy. It's not cause their star players Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown. It's cause of this guy right here, Celtics head coach, Joe Mazzulla. It turns out, Joe and Jimmy have a history that dates back to 2011. Cause during a win or go home game of the Big East tournament, it was West Virginia, the team Joe played for, versus Marquette, the team Jimmy played for. Whoever won was heading to the next round of the tournament, and Joe got it started by hitting a three. Then Jimmy got to the line, knocked down a few free throws, and hit a three of his own shortly after. It was a back and forth battle between both teams all game long. But everything came down to a Jimmy free throw, which he hit, and Joe missing the last shot of the game. It was over. Jimmy knocked dude right out the tournament and crushed his NBA dreams. So now you can see why when they met in the 2023 Eastern Conference Finals, Jimmy wasn't just clowning the Celtics, dude even called a timeout for their coach. Now that's crazy. 
but not as crazy as the time a fan raced LeBron James, or the time an NBA player met his biggest fan and the dude tried to kill him. These are the craziest NBA player versus NBA fan moments, and I don't know how the hell you're still here when I told you about all of that. Get out of here, man. Click it.